Well, good morning. Happy campers. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. We are back with another One Leads video. Please make sure you are slapping a like on the video. Check out the merch, everybody. We've got One Leads hats. We've got all of your desires on there when it comes to hoodies, when it comes to t-shirts. We're, we're always bringing sort of like relative merch out as well. Quality material. Yeah, kind of quality material. <laughs> and um, as I say, we'll be doing Euro stuff. We'll be doing transfer bits as well. Make sure you check out Backforce collab with One Leads fan channel. Well worth it. We're also getting across the pond on the Patreon today. We're also, we've also got generation leads out there, your player ratings, more bonus bits as well. Make sure you check out on that as well. If you want some back for merchandise we're going to be doing a giveaway on there. Make sure you check that out, everybody. We've got the debrief tonight with Brownie, Gabe, and Oscar as well. And let's get into it. What's the topic of today's video? Well, we're going to touch on a few things. Obviously, Leeds United, I think a lot of people are a little bit confused after what Kieran McKenna said. Now, Kieran McKenna is a financial football guru, but as we all know, I think the other day when he was putting something out there, it was a little bit clickbait. It was a little bit sensationalist. And it was basically around Leeds United's accounts. Leeds owe X amount, 190 million. Uh, they're going to have to sell every single player on the sun. That's not true. There's an 18% reduction in our parachute payments of which we're all very very aware that's what happens from the first second third year you have a reduction in your um in your in your parachute payments we all know that that's the financial update so Leeds United this season owe a certain amount back by I believe it's the 24th of June and I think that's around about sort of 70 to 80 million quid um as as per sort of what we're looking at right now so it's not detrimental, it's not horrific, but what we do know is probably two, potentially three of the assets are going to be leaving Leeds United this summer. You know, we, we've also got the parachute payments, which can be added to that. Of course, there's been an 18% reduction, but has there been an amount set aside? We've also got to look at the, the, the player wages that certain individuals are getting. Collectively, can we get some of them off the books? For example, Patrick Bamford's on a hell of a lot of money. Are we going to look to move him on? We then look at Willian Yonso, who's probably on a very decent amount. Cry Sensio Somerville, one of the highest paid players at the club. We move that on, frees up wages, obviously frees up a nice transfer budget as well. And we can also apply a lot of the wage structure when we're getting rid of, of Verber, of Jack Harrison. We can get rid of a lot of that sort of, um, you know, a lot of that financial stuff and, and and we can put that towards the accounts as well, which is all going to be good. It's all okay. For me, it, it all seems very, very doable uh, when I'm looking at it. Leeds United, you know, they owe 73 million, uh, which is a bit to be expected by the 30th of June uh, that we that we know, obviously. So it's not as bad as as, as, as Kieran McKenna's making out, of course. I think it is a little bit um, sensationalist. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think, Yesterday, we spoke about the Farker out stuff, and I wanted to touch on Joe Rodan, but the Farker out stuff I find so interesting. Now, I think having a little bit of a look around, we look at the managers at the bottom of the table that have done so, so well. Marty Cofentes at QPR, who just put a clinic on against Leeds United, who was racked up that amount of points that I think it would see QPR in, in the top eight or top nine, which from where QPR were under Gareth Ainsworth is unbelievable. There's another manager who's come in at Sheffield Wednesday, Danny Roll, who has been the assistant manager to Hansi Flick, has done so much at such a young age and is ridiculously intelligent when it comes to his football pedigree and his prowess. Danny Roll is an unbelievable young manager and we'll go, we'll go to the very top. I've said it on a tweet about three games into his, his Sheffield, Sheffield uh, Wednesday tenure. I couldn't believe what sort of football they were playing. High pressing football, recovering the ball high. And with that budget squad, what he was able to do with that team was nothing short of extraordinary. And I believe if they get the right bodies in, Sheffield Wednesday will be top eight next season, in my opinion. Danny Roll is a quality manager. Marty Quifentes has shown his credentials as well. It just shows that the bolstering of the division next season, the bolstering of the division, not just by teams, but some of the mid teams as well, and, 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 and sort of below par teams who have good managers, good young managers. So there's a lot of people who are talking about that. Um, Daniel Farker. The irritating thing is, with a lot of comments, is there's no alternatives. You guys who disagree with keeping Daniel Farker, which I've said is it will be on a very, very short leash at the start of next season. A lot of you guys don't give me alternatives. Just say Farker should be out. Well, who would you bring in then? I think a young, hungry manager. We've seen the like come in at um come in at, at Norwich as well. We've seen Will still been banded around for Sunderland. But managers in this division, we look at the ones who've made an impact post-January. Marty Quifentes, Danny Roll, they're two names of which, if Danny Roll was to come into Leeds United to replace Daniel Farker, I think he's a top, top coach. 
I think he's a top coach, top pedigree. And I think what you're going to see is Sheffield Wednesday finish very, very high next uh, this season. Uh, next season, I should say, if they get the recruitment right. And with that squad, with that squad, which is not good enough, it's uh, it's it's unbelievable. So I'm still in the the the, the Dan the Daniel Farker stay brigade at this moment in time. But I've always said from moment one, if a manager became available or if Leeds showed interest with a top manager, and when I say top manager, I mean a top coach as well, because our players will need coaching because we're not going to have the best side in the division next season, in my opinion. We get linked with a top top coach. I think there's a conversation to be had about Daniel Farker leaving the club. Definitely a conversation. But a lot of you guys. Because I've just mentioned that I, I'd keep Daniel Farker for the foreseeable unless that came into in sort of reality uh, are upset at me for for saying that. And I'm just being pr I'm truthful. I'm not just saying it as, as, as you know, a, a, an off the whim comment. But yeah, I think the Farker out lot, you all have very, very reasonable expectation. And, 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 uh, and, I, and I also, you know, understand why a lot of people think that. Now, Joe wrote on loads of chat at this moment in time about Joe. What's going to happen? Now, we're going to bring out a video of like some alternatives that Leeds United can look at instead of Joe Rodon. That's going to be a video coming up, and I think you guys might you know, enjoy that one, so make sure you tune in for that one. But at this moment in time, we know where his position is with Leeds United. The, 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 there's an update that you know it's the end of the season. That's it. We've heard no comments. We've heard no quotes. We've, we've heard nothing. But what we do know, what we do know right now is that Joe Rodon wants to play football. We know he wants to play football, but the sort of recent quote that he's given, which I think was in and around April, was that he just wants to play football. He doesn't know where he'll be next season. We will wait and see. Now, we mentioned it yesterday on the counterpoint. I think you're probably going to get a low-end Premier League team maybe coming in for Joe. You look at Ipswich with Burgess and Wolfenden, it's not really that great. Joe Rodon would be a really good pickup for a decent fee, I think. And what he's done at Leeds has been really, really decent. I think under pressure as well, playing out from the back, he's definitely developed in the absence of Pascal Strauch. So I think Joe's going to get a few offers from the Premier League. So do I think Leeds United will have Joe Road on next season? I do not. I do not think that's going to happen. But even if Joe was there, I'd want another centre-back bringing in with Pascal Strauch remaining at the club as well. I don't want this absolute crap scenario again where we have to put Ampadu at the back all the time. He's done really well, of course, he has at the back, but I want to see our best midfielder in midfield. And you do a penny for the thought of actually having our best midfielder um, against Southampton in the two recent games against them. Would we perform better? We definitely would have done because you'd have actually had a more competitive midfield. We could have changed that midfield to a three as well and there'd have been more balance in there. Ethan Ampadu has to go back in the midfield for the next championship campaign. Will we receive any offers for Ethan Ampadu as well? That's another conversation to be had, everybody. But I think Joe Rodham will not be returning to Leeds United. That's why I didn't include him on the tier list video earlier on. The recent quotes, the comments are, as of sort of two months ago, that he wants to be playing football next season and we'll wait and see, he'll wait and see where he's at, the options he essentially has at the end of the season. I think Leeds will be an option. I'm not 100% sure that's going to be enough for Joe to come down to the Championship, have another season down there and potentially, maybe might you know not get back to the, the the promised land let me know what you guys think in the comment section below everybody do you agree do you disagree what are your thoughts on the financial state at this moment in time what are your thoughts on daniel farker what are your thoughts on those names i just mentioned there really interested to hear your thoughts everybody penny for that and we'll see you tonight